Attention squad, please put your full focus on this one, because it's actually super useful. I promise. First things first, what's Foundry me? Foundry is basically Builder without the UI. Or, to put it in another way, a CLI that packs almost every functionality of the GNOME ID. And so, why is this cool, me? <laughs> what a stupid question. Because we can get the whole dev toolchain right inside our favorite environment. In my case, that's Ed. <laughs> Alright, let me show you. And features? We got language servers, but we don't care. And build systems, we got Mason support. We want that. We also want Flatpak from containers. Flatpak manifest support too. Works with JSON or YAML. Cross compile with Devised, but something nicer would be Android support. Maybe coming soon. Um, I hope. That's everything we care about for my little demo. Um, mm, let's check out the tooling maybe. Very quickly though. So we could potentially clone and build any project from GNOME GitLab just like that. Although that's not implemented yet, but that's okay. Because we can initiate an existing one, which is enough for getting us started. Oh, meanwhile, how to get it? I'm not sure of any way other than building it yourself. But you'll probably be fine if you install Builders dependencies first. If you still get troubles compiling it, try to disable the components you don't need. For example, Device plugin was failing on me, so I had to turn it off. I think I disabled documentation too. And a few more things. All good in the end. Now we're gonna create a new GNOME project. And I super wish Foundry had GNOME app template support already, but it doesn't yet. So we'll use Builder for this step. Okay? Project name, Hello Foundry. Two. Um, I made already one for testing things out. Guess what? <laughs> By the way, if you've never tried Builder before, the difference between a GNOME application and a GTK4 one is basically that the first uses libaddWaita. Alright. After we selected the template, Builder created all the necessary files, but we could click the play icon to build and run the flat pack. But we won't. Nope, nope, not doing that. Instead, we'll open the project in Zed, and the first thing we'll do is run Foundry init. And that will create a new dot folder to keep cache and build files. Similar to GNOME Builder's cache handling, pretty much. Okay, now we already have our Flatpak manifest, so to build and run our app, we just need to say Foundry run. And that will auto discover the Flatpak manifest. And by default, we'll execute a Flatpak build exactly like Builder would. But that's not the coolest part about Foundry. Nope, nope. Just wait for the build to finish and I'll show you the best thing about it right after. So, we have our window. And that's a Flatpak app, eh? An Etaway to Flatpak, basically. A laggy Etaway to Flatpak, actually. Oh well, that kind of failed. But it happens on debug builds. Hmm, <laughs> random, but can we add Foundry on command palette like VSC? I believe no? Anywho, let me show you what I totally love about it. First, let's make some code changes, and I'm going to do it in a super unnecessarily dramatic way. I'll add the source folder to the AI context. And then, I'll fetch the latest Adweta documentation too. Completely unnecessary stuff and video time-wasting, but perhaps useful for anyone who hasn't used AI editors before, if there are such people still. Um, this is a GNOME map in Rust. Can you please add... Add with the tabs in the main window. Oh god, we added a GTK switcher. But you know what, that was my bad really. I just got lazy to give it a proper prompt. Never forget, it's always a human's fault. Mmm, let me skip all these, okay? Alright, 
So now we made some changes to our code. We can rerun foundry run and it will only build what changed, which to be honest, I don't even know how to do with Flatpak Builder CLI outside Builder ID. So, did you like that? <laughs>